move the horse's feet. That's what I would have said in the past. I hate them, there's no point to them. If I'm gonna pull on my horse's mouth and ask him to flex his neck, I want his feet to move with it. And I pretty much still agree with that. I'd like him to move his feet. When I'm working all this bridle work that I'm doing right now, just moving Colt around, asking him to move around and such while we're getting ready, all the time that I pick up a rein, I want him to move his feet. I want to keep those reins and those, uh, that bit connected to his feet. Go ahead and stand still, bud. Um, so, but there are some flexions that I like to do now that um, really help me teach something very, very specific with his mouth. And that, what I'm trying to teach with these particular flexions is not only to, to unlock his neck, which I will do, but also, I want to teach him that when I apply pressure with this rein, you're to lift off of it and carry yourself. You're not to lean into it. You're not to push down into it. You're to touch it and lift off of it. So many of our horses, and this really even pertains more to the, the dressage world than it even does uh, some of the other disciplines, though there's opposite reactions that are even worse on the other end in some of the Western disciplines, like reining. But, Oftentimes we see many, many horses that dive down into their bit and they push and they lean into it. Well, I don't want the horse to lean into it. You're still in groundwork mode, aren't you? You're still in groundwork mode. Come here. Back there. Good job. So instead of having the horse lean into it or push down into me and look for me to hold him in that frame, all I want to do is just touch him. I want to be able to just touch his lips Alright, go have fun. I want to be able to just touch his lips when I'm working with him. I want to be able to just reach out and connect to him. If I have to be in contact, or if I'm riding a discipline where I want to have contact and make contact towards a young horse, which I want to establish that, I don't want him to be pushing into it or feel that weight of his neck or his head at all. Still trying to figure it out. I don't want to feel that. All I want to feel is just his lips, just his mouth, just maintaining touching that. So when I do these flexions on the ground, it's teaching him when that bridle comes on, follow it, don't push into it. Lift off of it, don't push into it. Ride forward and carry your neck and carry yourself in your back. I'm not telling you to do anything, I really, I'm not. Um, just ride forward. You don't have to lean into my hands. I'm not responsible for your weight, you are. That's what I'm going to teach in these flexions that we start. Okay, now you're working. Get over here. You done? So that's what I want to start in these exercises. And I think it's really important that I do these, particularly with horses that I'm getting into uh, maintaining a contact with their mouth, because it really establishes for them how I want to communicate as far as maintaining that contact, but not having him lean into me or not having to hold him in frame later on. His frame comes from his body and his movement and him holding himself, not me flexing his neck. Collection and frame doesn't come from me establishing something with my hands. It comes from the way his body and his back are working and the rest of it just happens. If the back and the body are working correctly, the frame will be there, not the other way around. It's a product, it's not a prerequisite. So that's the reason I do these flexions right away on the ground. Okay, and the first one that I do, most important, is I grab pinky and thumb, not pinky and thumb, pointer and thumb, and I'm just holding the bit lightly with those. And all I'm doing is I apply pressure upwards towards his ears with those, make sure his feet are square in front, to apply a little bit of pressure, and I want him to lift off of that pressure very lightly. This is, this is minimal pressure, very, very up, and as he lifts up and off of that, I want to also see his mouth open and engage, licking and chewing. If it doesn't, just like Colt's doing here. I want him to lick and chew and free up his jaw, open up this throat latch area right here, and lift his neck and maintain it. He's not touching my hands at all. He's lifting his own neck, maintaining his own weight, and I just want him to stay there. I'm just barely touching this. This is the connection that I want to have with him when I'm riding. This is the contact. I'm just barely touching it. He's maintaining where it has to be. Once I can get to the point that he will lift off of that and maintain his own weight here, I'll start to flex him very slowly to the side again. He's trying to get ahead of me here. You know the, you know the drill. I want him to just maintain his neck. If they move, just move with him a little bit. Come back down. 
just flex a little bit, very small signals with my hand. Again, I'm maintaining contact, but just a little bit with my hand to say, move your mouth, follow that bit, but don't press into it. He still isn't touching me at all. He's moving around, he's trying to figure out what I'm looking for, but he's not touching that bit. He's maintaining his own weight, lifting from his own neck. And you can see the muscles engaged through the top of his neck as he's maintaining his own weight. I'm just gonna flex slightly to the side here. Ho ho, you're fine. That's all I want there. There he dove down into me. He's trying to say, this is a lot of work holding myself up. I don't wanna do that. I want you to hold me up. And I gotta say, no, you hold yourself. I'm just gonna point you where you need to go, but you gotta hold yourself. So again, I ask him to lift up off of that, hold himself, activate the mouth. Good, ho ho, good. Flex to the side. There he tries to dive down, a little bit of action up on the bit, says keep your own weight. Yes, I know you're holding this for much longer than normal, but I want you to flex a little bit more. Right there, release, stretch it back out. Now he immediately goes to stretch that because he's using muscles that most of our horses, they don't use that often. To be able to lift their own weight upwards, that's a lot. It's like working out a muscle as he's holding that. It's like holding a dumbbell and just tensing it right there. It gets tense. It starts to become uncomfortable. So he needs to relax, stretch it back out, shake it, and then we can go again. Because he's, I'm not holding him there, because he's not pushing into my hands, he's only using the top muscles in his neck. Good. Follow the hands. Just follow them there. Activate the mouth. The jaw is relaxed. And relax. Good. Very good. Now, if this were a horse that I really needed to learn to stretch out and go down, Colt's the kind of horse that he naturally wants to go down, and he wants to put his head down and travel very, very low. For him, i got to pick him up. That's why this is important for him. I need him to pick himself up. For a horse that's always high-headed, I need to teach him to actually go down and out so I can start working different parts of their body that I need to. So if I had a horse like that that wasn't like Colt, what I would do is I would look for them. After I taught them to keep up here, I would maintain that pressure until they did actually volunteer it to go down. They kind of just push me out of the way a little bit and say, I'd like to take my neck down and out. And what I'm looking for more than down is actually out. I want to extend the neck forward, not just take it down. Any horse, we can just take their neck down like that. That's no good. Long and low is only good if it's out. It needs to be out. We need to stretch and extend the whole neck. So if I had a horse like that, I would ask him to follow. I don't want Colt to do this because he is not that kind of horse, but I would ask him to lift himself up, activate his jaw, lick and chew, and then I want him to follow me as I came down and the horse would stretch out forward. But it's very important, the key is not down, forward and out, forward and out. I'll do the same thing in the saddle, it has to go forward and out. All right, so once I've gotten those, those are the basic flexions there. There's two more that I like to do. And this one starts, oh, I got my range backwards. This one starts if I got a horse that uh, I need a neck rein, even if it's a dressage horse, it needs to learn a little bit of neck reining. Mostly on reining horses, though, as I love my reining horses, though Colt does a lot of dressage now, so he's got to learn this too. No, we're not doing haunches in, though I love it. Nice job. Uh, I want him to move off this outside rein. I'll come around and show this to all of you guys. We'll work right here for now. And I do the same thing, I ask for upward first, maintaining a very, very small connection. Then I'm just applying pressure with my outside rein and I want him to move away from it. Lift his neck, maintain his neck lifted, but just move away from that pressure and activate the jaw like Colt's doing here and then relax. We're gonna try that again on this side. Pressure comes up, lift your neck, hold your frame. And notice I'm not asking for flexion of the pole. I'm asking for flexion of the neck. The pole you can get very easily and you get it last. It should be the last thing you ask for. But right now I just want the neck. I want the base of his neck and the rest of his neck to lift, extend the vertebrae, activate the mouth like he's doing, and then take it with this outside hand, my left hand, and move his nose away, flex that neck, stretch the outside long muscle here. And then relax. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Ho ho, lift up, and this right side activates, he moves his neck away, he's not pushing into me, he's just merely moving it softly away, 
Still licking and chewing, activating and relaxing his jaw. Good, very good. Okay, so that's the flexions on the ground I do. And again, those are to teach him to maintain his own weight, to maintain the, the light contact, the light connection, as well as to start to unlock the top line of his neck and free up his neck and teach himself what muscles he wants to move with. All right, let's move on from there. Now that I've taught those, we can start to get into some of these other exercises really, really easily. Tie these reins up for a second here. Okay, just like we did with the, uh, with the rope halter, I want to teach forward, forward consistently, but in a way that I'm going to be able to directly translate to my saddle with my dressage whip. So I'll hold the rein about four to six inches from where the bit is, right here, and uh, this is going to be my go forward cue, both here and in the saddle. This is